Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Gaming Griffin. This is Voidbound FTB, and oh, I've been busy. Um, all right, let, let's, you know what, let's start at the top, and we'll work our way down, and I'm, I'm gonna start with getting you guys like, caught up on what I've been doing. So, ha, 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 all of the solar panels, all of the solar panels, yes, like, like, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the resonance, which means... One, two, three, four, five, six. So, and six of the redstone. So, I mean, two more of these. Oh! Hey, Mitch! Just started an episode. Go, go, go visit Mitch, everyone. Say, say, say Griffin sent you. So, so, yeah. So, lots and lots and lots of solar paneling. So, what this means is my, my and I, I had to finally, like, okay, you can tell where I did, because I started out with the energy conduits, I had to move up to the enhanced, and I've had to go to the ender, and, and, and I'm pretty sure the ender is okay, so, so, this got left, I, I don't know if, if, if somebody left it in my system or not, but, yeah, so if you look, average input, oh, griffonites, oh, that's an interesting thing to call you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're Griffinite. Congratulations. So, so, lots of power coming in, and, and I'm two of these redstone solar panels away from being able to go to, uh, solar, what, what's the next, next, next level's advanced, which pops out, uh, 4,000 RF a tick, which is pretty, pretty good. And then, of course, we, we try to get up to the ultimate, but, but holy crap, holy crap, that's gonna take some work, like... And, and, okay, so let's, let's, let's go down, we'll go down a level and I'll, 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 I'll hold what I was thinking. So, so it's kind of funny. All right, so the, the Coke oven, I figured out something that had been really, really bothering me because I was having trouble doing automation. Oh, okay, it's, it's just out of, out of Coke. So, so one of the big holdups for, for me is steel, right? So, like, the blast furnace turns it into steel. The problem is... Okay, I can energy item conduit out of a coke oven, no problem. Like I, I had build pipes, I tried conduits, like like pretty much anything will work to get items out of the coke oven. The problem was you couldn't get anything into it, because yeah, I mean you could do the build pipes to transport the fluid out. You could do the item conduit. This moves the the coke like. Whenever it finishes, it transfers that straight over into the blast furnace. No problems getting things out. Getting things in, at least in the version of um, Infinity that we're on, actually a problem. Eventually, I, I figured it out. Like, and, and I didn't even see this on any of the Reddits. Well, I'm sure it's on Reddit somewhere or whatever. But a hopper will work, of all things. So I can load this up with coal, and I recently just like refilled it a little bit. And it will automatically feed in, which was a huge thing. So I can leave this going because I do have my chunk loader. So I actually haven't uh, checked what today's... Holy crap! So yeah, I wasn't on, like, overnight since I figured this out. Ho holy nutter bunnies. Do I have any... Okay, I've, I've still got iron left, so, so that's good. But I'm actually, I had this whole thing all but filled, so I'm going to have to fill up on some iron. Holy crap, okay. Well, uh, so, oh, and the other thing is, I had, um, I had given Flint, like, a full, a full set of these, uh, creosote oil tanks, because he's got something he wants to do with them, I think. I'm gonna have to, and I even have some in my system, like, we can go look at my system. Oh, oh, okay, so before we, before we go, okay, okay, so I've been stupid busy down here, like, I kind of forgot that... You guys haven't seen this just yet, so I've been really, really busy down here, if you can't tell. Started out like I decided on my floor. I'm still pretty happy with the concrete. I was working on the ceiling last night, just just kind of doing it, and it was lamps. I, the look I was going for was kind of like underground lab slash bunker sort of thing, and I think this is pulling it off reasonably well. I'm... The only thing I'm not sure... I'm sold on is the the floor, but I think it's okay, and I think it'll be okay as this fills up. So, so that's that's the aesthetics, which is which is probably you know not the biggest dramatic change here. So, if I recall, the last time we were together, 
I hadn't set any of this up except for the actual ME system itself. So, let's, 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 I guess, start at the beginning. So, the ME system and the ME drives, and I've got 64K storage cells, and this thing is full, hasn't even touched this yet. I am, I, I don't, they might have finished overnight. Let's take a look here. Okay, the normal quarry is still going. The ender quarry might have finished. Oh, 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 and, and, and I, okay, we'll, we'll get into this in a second. I'll, I'll tell you about this in a second, but. So, I, my power situation has gotten to the point I'm generating enough that I can run two ender quarries at the same time and not have any trouble. So, my power generation on the RF side of the house is actually pretty strong. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to consider like like alright, if we if we go back up here. And it's getting to be night. But I'm not sure I actually am going to go with the with the grid that I'd laid out, thinking that I was gonna put solar panels on all of these. Simply because oh, well, hey, hey Mitch, thanks, that helped. Simply because that's 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 like going beyond overkill into oh, holy, holy crap, what's wrong with me? But at the same time I haven't gotten into anything that's particularly expensive in terms of power. So I'm on the fence. I'm not going to tear up the conduits I've laid out just yet. Because I can always fill it up even if it's just with the, like, the cheaper solar panels. And I, I'm i terrible. I have not yet started, uh, you know, storing EU, let alone, like, actually generating a lot of it. That's, that's a whole separate thing to do. But I'll get there. So, but, okay, so the point, the reason I went upstairs was to point out that my power generation is actually fairly solid. And the nice thing is with solar panels, I don't have to worry about it. I can walk away for a couple of days if I have to and no, ain't no thing. So that has allowed me to do things like run an ender quarry and expand my uh, my applied energistics, my ME system. So I have my ME crafting terminal model. You guys are familiar with that. I've got my drives, which are the, filled with the... Uh, this is the storage cell that Flint provided when he helped me with like the episode he came over with IT support. And I have filled out like another one of these. And, and you might be wondering how I did this. Because, okay. What I have finally gotten working is auto-crafting, ME style. Which is not as hard as it sounds. So, okay. The basics of... Crafting with applied energetics. The components of it are crafting co-processing units, crafting storage, and these come in different sizes. So, like, these are 16K, this is a 64K, and these are just the, the co-processing units. So, I will give you the best understanding I have with the, with the caveat of this could not be, you know, exactly right. So, when you're doing a job... It will store all of the items it needs to do that job. That's where these crafting things come in. So if you have a job that has like a lot of pieces, so for example, I'll, I'll, I'll switch here. One of the things that I can make is these like a quintuple compressed cobblestone. That takes a lot of cobblestone to make. So when you go to store it, you can only like store so much cobblestone to make so many of them simply because it's just sheer number of items and items re relate to you know bytes in the me system I, I i'm terrible and i forget exactly how much one item is in terms of bytes i just i don't remember so i'm not gonna lie to you and say i forget i do so that is what these do in the, the crafting co-processing units they allow you so if the crafting storage holds the items these co-processing units let you run multiple parts of the job at the same time. Now, now, what does that mean? That means they will put it over to things like the molecular assemblers. So, what the molecular assemblers do, they're kind of like if you were in the crafting bench, and, and, oh, and like, alright, let's say I wanted to make, uh, I, don't, I don't know, a cobble. So, let's say I wanted to make a, uh, a compressed cobblestone. That's how I would do it. What a, what a, what a molecular assembler does is that, essentially. It, it just does that automatically for you. And, and the, 
the automatic processors will send it over here via the, the ME interfaces and have the molecular assemblers do that for you. Now, the other part of that is, so these are like your, your auto crafting, you know, units themselves, right? The other part of the ME system that it can do is it can, it can hook into things like your sag mills and your alloy smelters and your inscribers, which we'll get there in a second, but this is, this is just awesome. And it can run things through it. So, for example, you'll notice I can have them create, like, clear glass or electric steel or iron. And it'll do that. I'll have it run a, a chunk of iron. Like, if, if you see, it creates two pulverized iron with one iron ore. So, the ME system will put an iron ore into the sag mill and have it pulverize the iron, which, you know, gets you a you get two for one, and that's one conversion it'll do. And then it will make an iron ingot out of a pulverized iron. So you can have it take an iron ore all the way from ore to ingot. And, and I, I double it just because of resources. You don't have to. You could technically just have it smelted. But, but that's me. So... And these are, and what you put these things in is they're, they're um, here, I'll pull one out just for giggles. What these actually are are patterns, which you make in your pattern terminal. And, and I'm holding shift so you can actually, see, when you shift, you can actually see what it is. But you just put these patterns into wherever they belong. So, for example, the, the actual crafting sort of things go into your molecular assemblers. But there's two different types of patterns. There's a crafting pattern and there's a processing pattern, right? And you make these depending on, you know, what you want to do. So if I, all right, I'll give you an example. Um, okay, okay, so let, let's, I don't have any patterns, are you kidding me? All right, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're doing it live here, folks. So that's a storage, so, uh, oh, I do have some, oh, here, here, here we are, all right. Oh, I pulled them all out because I'm smart. Okay, so I don't think I have aluminum. No, I don't. Okay, good. Okay, okay. So I'll, I'll run you through how a pattern gets made. So you have aluminum ore, and it will make, when you run it through the mill, it'll make two aluminum dust. So you put that in, and that's now a pattern you have. But then you can clear it out and say, all right, one, one aluminum dust will make you one aluminum ingot, and that's another pattern. And now I have the ability to put this in and say, okay, I put the dust creation into the sag mill, and I put this into the smelter, like, like the alloy smelter, and bam, I can, let's say, let's say I need more, more aluminum, I'll make 10, I will select the amount, it will check and make sure I have a crafting CPU that's capable of handling the job. Like, it takes 70 bytes to do this. So I have to have at least 70 bytes of storage. And the, you know, the machines necessary and the patterns in. I can start the job. So if I look in here, yeah, you can see it's already, uh, it's, it's crafting it automatically. And over here is, it's actually running it through. Does it make a three to one? I'll have to check that later. <laughs> anyway, oh yeah, well, if it has three dust in it, well, and then it automatically makes it. So that's like the most basic how to use the system. If that makes any sort of sense, but let's, let's, all right, let's, let's throw a bigger job in here. Let's, let's actually show you guys just how powerful this is. So I just had a crap load of steel, like, like, holy crap. So... I bet you I might be able to make five of these. Yeah, I've got all the resources. So, okay. So it, it runs through all of the resources it's going to need. And because I went through and set up like all of the patterns and all of the subcomponents, like I have it transferring, like it can create, it grinds cobble into sand and sand into gl clear glass, which will get you down to glass, which will get you down to glass paints. I made all of these patterns in here. So it can go from the most basic units all the way up to crafting the actual solar panels. So then we'll start this job, right? And you'll notice all of these fired up immediately. 
And if we look in here, you'll notice it, it tells you, you know, what's going on, what's it doing. It's doing, like, all of the things. It's got, if we look over here, yeah, you can see it. It's crafting all of these in the molecular assemblers, like all the little uh, nuggets it's going to need. All the glass, all the glass panes, the lapis. You can, you can kind of see it going in here, and it corresponds to what's going. So these jobs, you know, they, they take a little while because there's a lot to do. I've found the biggest holdup in terms of time is absolutely the processing these because you have to process, holy, like, you know, a couple of hundred cobblestone into sand. And that sand has to get melted into glass. It just takes time. Even even if I put like I have, I have two two sag mills and two alloy smelters, which you can you can see here. Like you see this little two right here. Even with two of those going, it still takes a little while. Even if they have octatic capacitors, just it takes time to process that raw material. But guess what? I don't gotta do it. <laughs> So that's that's why I my power generation capabilities just keeps jumping. At the at steel is by far my holding point because it just takes it takes steel to make the solar panels and my production of steel and and, and I like I tried electrical steel. I electrical steel doesn't work for solar panels for me. I don't know why, but it definitely doesn't. So yeah, there's that. Okay. So while this is going, I will, I'm giving you like the, the, the tour of the system, even though it's going to get torn apart pretty soon here because I hate myself. So fun fact about the crafting processing, they always have to be in a square. So this is a three by three. They always have to be in a, a square. They can't be in like a rectangle or whatever. And you can have a mix of crafting and, and storage. I, I made this into one big one simply because I needed a lot of storage to be able to do the cobblestone compression. And cobblestone is what, like, murders your bites used. So I had these as a couple of different. You can have, I think I had like a 4x4 four four and, a, and, and a 4x4 four and, a, and then I create, crafted some more. But I had this one and a co-processing unit as its own unit. That way you could run like two different jobs. Whereas this can only handle like the one job. So if I wanted to start up, say... I don't, I don't know, uh, here, if I wanted to start this, I probably, oh, there is one, but let's say I want to start this one. Oh, I, I can, there's actually a unit that can handle it? I can't imagine these 1k ones can. Huh, maybe they, maybe they can. Oh, maybe I have enough of the stuff pre-made for it. Yeah, I've got all the- uh, I've got everything available, so there's actually not a lot I'd have to craft to go making these. Yeah. Okay, so- but if I wanted to do a big job that required some work, like- like if I wanted to do cobble, for example. Yeah, there aren't any crafting CPUs that can handle that. There, it would take too much storage, more than these ones could do. So, nah, uh, sorry, bad example first off, but hopefully you get what's going on. So that runs through here. Okay, so I, I, I I've been I, I had to call in for a crash course, and we haven't gotten there yet. But so let's go through what this is. This is the ME controller. So by default, you have uh, eight channels in your system, unless you have an ME controller. When you have an ME controller, you can k take out thirty-two channels. A little bit of a difference, right? Now the difference, okay, so this is a dense, an ME dense cable, which can handle, like, okay, if you overload a cable, like a smart cable that can only handle eight channels, it just like shuts down part of the system, or, or all of it. But these, these dense cables can handle a lot more, but they have to be tied into the, the controller. Ba the, the downside is you can't put these terminals onto dense cables. So you kind of have to be a little bit smart. Like this one's this one's running six out of eight, which is a little bit high, but doable. It, it could be worse. So this one's only running like four out of the 32 channels. This one's my main trunk right here. And it's the one with like 14 or 15 out of, like yeah, I get to 15 out of 32, which is like almost halfway there, but it can handle it, you know? And, and it's handling what, three crafting units, all of my inscribers and all the, like, ME interfaces they have, all the ME interfaces for my, you know, my processing, so it, you can do it, and you can have a 32 coming out of each side of this ME controller, so, so it, it's pretty handy, and, uh, okay, there's, you can, you can set these up a little bit differently, 
like I think they can have a little bit of distance apart. Th these are a little bit strange, but they work. So if you want the real details, I would highly recommend you read up on it because these are, I'm, I'm just basic and I'm like, all right, no, I'm gonna chuck these right here. I'm gonna pull things off of it, and I'll just use it. But I think you can have them like a little distance apart, but not a lot. I only think you can have one person Emmy system as well, but that might have changed since, you know, what I read. Anyway. Wow, this is turning into an episode, like, detailing. Like, like, I'm giving you a rundown. So, okay. But I'm going to keep going. Just because. Just okay. So these are just ME interfaces, and, and Flint was here, so this is also... Hello, phone. Hi. This is also an ME interface. These are just, you know, two different... Same thing. Same exact thing. So the ME interface just, you know, this has... If you look here, and this was a neat trick Flint taught me, and he read about it. If you put your push and pull onto where your ME interface is, you don't have to have an import or export bus. You can you can straight up like like this has an import bus, whereas this the the inscriber will do the. Uh, all right, so here's here's a better example. This is an import bus. This is an export bus, and an export bus and export bus and and import moves things into the ME system. Export will take things out of the ME system and put it in wherever you want. The nice thing about this is you don't you don't need one for this. You just need you just need the interface for these machines, which is really, really, really nice. Cause I did have like export buses running all across the front and it looks kinda ugly. I really like being able to just use the interface for it. Super, super nice. So that that deals with getting things in and out of the uh, the, the processors. Now, now we go to these. Oh, I actually had to, this, this thing, this unit specifically, I had to call in Flint for a consult, which I didn't want to do. I was really trying to figure this all out myself. But it, it, it didn't work even the way he thought it was. Like, he, he, he spent a good 20 minutes just, like, looking at this, like, this should work. Why does this not work? So I didn't feel quite so bad, but okay. So inscribers. So if you are someone who makes um, uh, who makes any of this, any of this sort of like, um, all right, hang on. We'll just we'll just you, we'll just go. We'll go here. There there. Uh, yeah. So these things. These get used in all of the ME things, just like the crafting co-processing units, uh, everything. Just the storage components, the ME drives. I think I heard somebody behind me. Yeah, Mitch is here. Hey, Mitch. What you doing? We should go see what Mitch is doing. Is he down here? Is that where we went? Yeah, I haven't showed you guys this yet. Mitch is around. What is he doing? Oh, wow. Your puns are bad, and you should feel bad. So Mitch is just having to look around. All right. So so anyway, yeah. So for the Emmy sort of stuff, it takes these circuits. It just does. It's it's so so tedious to make them. You have no idea. But if you automate the inscribers, it is less painful. So where's where's the? Okay, this is still going. Uh, it, it'll be done. Eh, soonish, soonish. <laughs> the nice thing is, okay, so. so circuit. Let's say I want to make 20 of these. Yeah, one of these jobs can handle it. So I used to have to... Alright, I, I, right, I don't know if I've ever... Let me, l l let, me, let me show you how it usually gets done. Two, three. Alright. So if I wanted to make this, and I think this is the gold one. Yeah. Guess what? You can't put stacks in here. You get to do it. One by one. And I put acceleration cards, so this is so much faster than it usually is. But yeah, no, there is... 
it is, you have no idea. Because, okay, so there you made the gold, then you have to make the silicone. Oh, and it, oh, it's, it's automatically doing it. But you have to make these, and then you have to press them together and put these all in here. So you'll see it's automatically doing it for me. I'll tell you why it's doing that in a second, but... Yeah, no, it sucks. Right out loud. Especially when you're trying to make, like, you know, these. Because, because guess what, kids? It takes... Uh, Alright, let me, let me... Let me give you an idea of just kind of what kind of pain we're dealing with here. So, to make these, you need one of these. Well, guess what? You need... Four... Oh, three. You need three of the small ones to make one of these. And a circuit. So, right there, uh, there's one circuit, two circuit, three circuit, four circuits, four... So, and then, moving on up, you need, uh, you need three of these to make one of these, uh, one of, one of the, uh, the 16K, and then you need three of the 16K to make the 14K, or the 64. Whoa, whoa, I'm special today. It gets real old, real fast. Let me just, let me just say that. So, what these, what this allows you to do is the Emmy interface and the import bus allows you to auto-craft these components. So the pattern here is one, one printed silicone with one silicone. And then this one is, yeah, this one will give the, the it'll take a quartz circuit. This takes the printed gold, this takes the diamond, and you can just order, order like, alright, if I want 20 of these. Oh, look, I'll be back in a minute. It'll get done. Yeah, it's good. It, yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Now, this auto crafts, the, w whenever it makes one of these, it auto sets it up to do this, and that's done via the import bus. So. Or the export bus. The export bus. It's really important to keep those straight when you're trying to do this setup. So anytime in the system it sees a, a calculation, a logic, or an engineering circuit, it will automatically pull it in and, and the inscriber will automatically do it. Because, uh, oh, okay, so it automatically exports redstone. And this not only, like, auto-exports the printed, it also has the, the, since it has a crafting card, this, this one right here with its crafting card, if it detects that there's not one here, it'll order the job. So it can send a job to make a silicone circuit to this inscriber automatically. So this lets it, lets it auto print the circuits. Now it should have been able to just have an interface with the circuit patterns here. It really should have been. And that's what Flint and I were trying to figure out. We don't know why. So I just, ch we cheesed it, essentially. And it will just auto-print these circuits. So anytime it finds one of the, uh, the printed circuits here, it just automatically creates it into, into one of the, one of the fully, comp one of these, what are they? Logic processors. That's the word I was struggling for. It's a little bit of a cheese. It works. Because the ME interfaces were not working. So... Wow, yeah, I just spent an episode explaining my entire ME system. And the bad news is, I'm fully intending to tear this apart. Is this? Oh, oh, oh! Solar power! So, yeah. Guess who's back? Back again. Solar's back. And I have to make another one of these. I'll do that later. And, and, I, and I have to do that. Ah. I've wasted enough time. So, yeah. That is how I suddenly have, because I can I can walk away, go get, go make a sandwich, and, and come back to, you know, a full set of these. So, it's amazing. So, that being said, all of this is kind of going to get torn apart, because, and actually I'll just queue up the job now. Uh, Nutter Bunnies. I need one Nutter. Wait, 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 wait. I can do that. I can do that. 
No! I had, actually, this was, you'll notice the little, little, little ender chest right there. I had a turtle come by and, and he cleaned out most of it. Whoa! Yeah! But, yeah. There we go. And I just put these up here out of laziness because I didn't want them upstairs. There it is. Okay, I was like, where, where are the under the little ice seeds? I'm, I'm about to get very upset. I am going to have to figure out an automatic way to, like, generate ender pearls. Just, just saying. Oh, crap, that reminds me. Okay, so Flint gave me this. It's amazing. I love it. It is powered by ender pearls, but he, he, it's a draconic evolution sort of thing, which Flint has gotten into and I haven't. It's how he poofs around all the places. So if I press shift and scroll my mouse... Bam. And it costs me an ender pearl to do it. So, like, right now it's sitting on eight fuel, which is eight ender pearls. And I'm burning it just to show you guys. But if I want to go... Come on, scroll wheel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. That was special. Bam! Yeah, those are so nice. I, I have one set to... Uh, let's see, I have my Emmy, my... Radio, my uh, I have, there's a blaze spawner. If I need a couple blaze rods, I'll go pick on uh, my nether quarry and my mining age quarry. I have those all set, and I could just go bam, bam, bam. But we were doing something. We we were gonna go like as the soap. and behold. Yeah, so it'll just make all these vibrant capacitors for me, which I will. I will put along the wall. So, yeah, okay. I just spent an entire episode explaining, like, my Emmy crafting system. I hope, I hope, like, it was interesting and people find it useful. Because I tried to essentially give you an overview of what you can do. If you have questions, I mean, leave it in the comments and I'll, I'll go get Flint. I mean, I'll answer it to the best of my ability. But I also do encourage you to go, like, look at some of the tutorial videos and... To end, just you know, read up on it a little bit. It has changed my life pretty much forever. Cause, cause you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna order the system to make. You know, oh, I need another ten of these. Oh darn, no CPUs available. Oh, and I do need some pure certus quartz. I'll have to deal with that too. Shucks, I'll have to spend you know five minutes getting everything ready and waiting for this job to finish. Ah, uh, shucks. Oh, well. Go get a sandwich. Be right back. So, yeah, no, this is amazing. I, I don't know that I can ever go back to, to FTB without this sort of thing again. And, and and my next job is gonna be to, like, finish up, get the storage rolling, and, and I'm gonna make- the next floor down is gonna be this floor. And this is probably where my, uh, what, what do you call it? Where my processing is going to be, if that makes sense. So all of the, uh, the, uh, what do you want to call it? The, the molecular assemblers, I'm going to put them downstairs. I'm going to move the crafting units and make more of them. So many more. I'll probably move my smelters and all that sort of stuff downstairs. The inscribers, I don't want to move them, but I'm going to have to. These things are so fussy. Like, uh, okay. Pro tip for anyone who tries to do what I just did with this circuit thing. The redstone has to go on the this level of it. It has to go on the sides. The printed silicone has to come from the bottom. And and whatever logic circuit you make, or whatever circuit you make or whatever, has to go in from the top. It is side dependent and very, very fussy. And you can, I can only, I've only ever been able to import it from the sides as well. It didn't, it didn't really work for me when I tried to import from the bottom or anything like that. Like, so, ye be warned. It be fussy. So, yeah. Oh, and also make sure you have your presses in. So, uh, I've, I've, I've spent so much time on this. I'm sorry, folks. I hope this was, I hope this was helpful. Because this is only, like, apparently scratching the surface of what the, the applied energistics mod could do. But it is so, so amazing. Like, like, holy crap. Levels of amazing. Hopefully this is interesting. Hopefully, like, 
I'm gonna clean all this up. Now, now that, like, I've made this janky system that looks like crap, now I'm gonna clean it all up, make it more functional, and, and really make it kind of, like, boss. Like, like, so many, so many of these things are gonna get made. You should give no idea. But, here nor there, here nor there. For now, we're gonna call it. So, Gaming Griffin ME system. Operational. Da 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 da! And that's it. For now, this is the Gaming Griffin, signing off!